Hello and welcome to Formatech Podcast. Today we're going to talk with Dr. Nadav Pam, our clinical director, and we're going to talk about acne vulgaris and how common this disease is, and all the ways that you can treat it, and of course, all the latest uh, treatment and technology. Thank you, Corinne. It's a pleasure to be here today. Okay, Nadav. So let's start. Uh, could you explain to me what is acne vulgaris and what caused this disease? Acne vulgaris is a quite common skin disease, considered to be the ninth most common skin disease in the world, according to several publications. Um, acne vulgaris is a condition where you have black and white comedons, post cyst, and it can affect the forehead, back, and chest. Uh, usually it starts in adolescence, but in some cases it can persist into adulthood. And how common is acne in the world? Currently, the literature says that acne is a uh, affecting up to 85% of the worldwide population. As I said, it's the ninth most common skin disease, or eight, depends on where you look at the numbers. In the population, I guess that almost each one of us will have some form of acne during our lifetime. 85% is of the adolescent population will suffer from one form or another from acne. Only a few of them will uh, have acne manifestation in the adulthood that might start at the adolescence and persist to adulthood or start for the first time in adulthood, like adult onset acne. So the ones that are adults, what cause acne in adulthood? So for females, for example, it's changing the hormonal status after and before pregnancy. Sometimes it can be due to uh, taking medication or stopping medications and um, the skin condition maintenance. What are the, uh, some of the traditional treatments that we have today to treat acne? So uh, today we, we, have, um, we can offer several ways to treat it. The common one will be uh, according to the severity. Each patient will present to the uh, skin professional, usually dermatologist, cosmetologist, skin beautician. It depends on the severity of the, the first meeting. Acne can be mild, moderate, or severe. According to the level of severity at the initial meeting, we will uh, fine tone and give the correct treatment. It can be topical with or without prescription, and it can be oral drugs, and it can be a medical device such as IPL, uh, treatment for acne. Each one has their own advantage and disadvantage. Can you explain to us about the traditional uh, ways to treat acne? So uh, the first thing that we need to do is to diagnose the level of severity of the acne at the initial meeting with the male or female patient. Different people will present with different severity, and according to that, we uh, adjust the treatment for them. Also, according to their um, drug history, uh, allergies, and also to their compliance to the treatment. We can uh, divide the treatment strategies for acne to with topicals, either with doctor's prescription or without. Of course, the doctor's prescription will be containing higher concentration and more effective treatments. Then the other stage is oral medications. Then the third stage is uh, manual extraction, medical devices, and chemical pills. Each, each treatment algorithm has its own advantage and disadvantage and needs to be discussed with the patient to inform him what are the best possibilities for him or her. Okay, and what about IPL? Let's talk about the advanced technology that we have today. IPL is intense pulse light. The idea behind it is that um, the P acne, or from 2016, it's called C acne. It's changed in nomenclature. Is an um, it's uh, it's a bacteria that survives in anaerobic condition inside the whole hair follicle. Once you have proliferation of uh, C acne, basically it creates a microbiome around it and it makes it very hard for topical or drug to affect it. And we already know today that we have a lot of drug resistance to oral and topical medication that contains antibiotics. Therefore, IPL is an alternative solution to avoid this problem. P-acne, or C-acne today, contains co copoporphyrin number three. This is a chromophore, it's a natural substance that only the P-acne or C-acne contains inside. No human cells contain that chromophore target for the IPL. So the energy from the pulse light of the IPL will be attracted to that specific chromophore at a wavelength of 430 nanometer. Therefore, it will break from the inside of the bacteria, the bacteria itself, and will cause the acne inflammation to subside. 
while we are using IPL, we don't have downtime for the patient. We don't need to create a blood test before and after. We can continue with sport activities and we don't have any effect for those people who are afraid to swallow pills. There is such phobia. And some people who already took medications sometimes develop side effects which um, prevents them from using them. Another approach for the IPL is that the IPL treatment responds extremely fast from just one single pulse per inflammatory lesion compared to traditional oral drugs that starts to take effect after two or three months in isotretinoin, for example, it takes 16 to 24 weeks to start to take effect. And with oral antibiotics, you affect your entire body. And also sometimes they write to you that before it becomes better, it becomes worse while using antibiotics. With IPL, you don't have such a, an effect. So now let's continue to IPL and what make IPL different uh, from uh, the traditional option for acne vulgaris? First of all, it's minimal side effects. Second of all, you target specifically the acne lesion. You are actually contacting with the IP IPL applicator the inflammatory skin lesion and shoots directly on it. So you don't need to uh, irradiate areas that don't infect with acne. So it's a specific targeted just for the inflammatory skin lesion. In addition, you have minimal downtime for the patient. So he arrives, you treat only the inflamed skin that you, uh, that you see right now at the meeting, and then the patient leaves. He doesn't need to do anything else that is to prepare for this event. He needs to put sun protection, and he can go uh, in between classes, go back to his gym. He can do all sports activities, and it doesn't affect the rest of his uh, daily routine and especially teenagers, adolescents at this stage, they uh, are actively participating in sports activities, basketball, soccer, karate, and they know or afraid that if they will take these oral drugs, that it might affect their performance in some way. So in their mind, they prefer the scar over the tr oral treatment. So IPL allows them to continue their daily routine, even if they are uh, athletics, and get the treatment to prevent the scar formation by uh, non, not treating the acne at all. In addition, uh, when you are using IPL, you do not have any side effects that are connected to each antibiotics and its potential side effects because when you are treating acne, you are treating it for months, sometimes more than uh, one year and sometimes several treatments, several regimes. And during that lifetime, when you are taking the pill, it will affect all your body cells and it will create drug resistance. So IPL will allow you to, to have drug-free uh, treatment solution for your acne vulgaris. It's fast, effective, and minimal downtime. And you don't need to do any blood test, and it will not affect your liver or kidneys or any other organ because you are treating just in contact with that skin inflammation that you have right now. And the result is very, very fast compared to any other alternative. Can I see any side effect after the treatment? So when you are using IPL, you need to adjust the skin parameters according to the Fitzpatrick. This means that uh, our genetic skin uh, melanin in, um, content in the skin. So we need to make the parameters correct according to the skin type. And with that, we prevent a burning of uh, the skin by using higher than needed uh, jowls per centimeter squared. So we have a lot of ways and mechanisms to adjust the parameters like a melanin meter or reading correctly the skin level and adjusting the energy. We can also use stencil in case where you just have few acne lesions that are not condensed. And with this, you basically avoid any risks that the IPL might have in an untrained hand. Is the treatment hurt? No, there is no pain during the treatment with acne vulgaris. Basically, the patient doesn't feel any pain at all. The applicator is attached with a gel with the correct parameters. You shoot one pulse per acne vulgaris skin inflammatory lesion, and that's it, and you move to the next one. The patient uh, has minimal downtime, uh, and then he cleans the gel, puts the sun protection, and go back to his test, school, daily activities. So after the treatment, I don't see my face will be like uh, super uh, red, or I don't know, like uh, um, puffy or something so like that. It depends on uh, the severity of the acne while you are treating. So if you have just a few skin lesions, you are not expected to have any redness after the treatment and you go back home. If you, more like most of the face is covered already with uh, uh, active inflammatory acne vulgaris, then you might expect some redness that will subside with few hours after the treatment. 
because you have treated a larger surface area at this given session. So it really depends how much. Now, IPL does not prevent new acne vulgaris to appear, but uh, it, it affects the one that exists right now. While you are treating right now with, what, with the skin lesion that exists, you are preventing them to form into a scar. That's why you need to make the regime once a week, because you are not curing the biology of the patient from forming new acne. Adolescents are still hormonal, and even adults can be still hormonal during uh, different years of their activity. So acne is a tendency of the skin. Sometimes it's clogged by uh, makeup. Sometimes uh, it's the uh, amount of sebum that you produce. You don't change the genetics and the hormones of the patient. You treat the uh, inflammation that exists uh, to prevent it to form into a scar. So if we talk about all of this, explain to me how you perform this treatment. So how long it lasts um, for each treatment? Okay, so for each uh, patient, it depends on the severity where he came for the uh, treatment number zero. If the patient is below 18, he has to come with his parents to sign informed consent when then you explain to the parents and to the patient uh, the process that he's going to go through, the advantages and disadvantages that can be for any type of the other alternative treatments. And then uh, the parents with the adolescents need to make the decision. If they are adult, they make the decision on their own. Once they sign an informed consent uh, about their health situation, that they don't have any contraindication and they are not taking any photosynthesizer antibiotics that might uh, expose them uh, with a low level of fluence to a burn, then they can start the treatment immediately during all the year. If you can treat in summer or winter, you can treat in during the whole year. So uh, the patient then enters and then you uh, tell him that he has to come once a week to control the disease. Why? Because you have to take a photo before and after each session to show the patient what you treated already will not exist in the next meeting. But if a new uh, acne lesion will, f will form in the next meeting, it will be something that you didn't treat in the previous treatment. So you do need a uh, once weekly treatment regime and that will change according to each patient individual. On average, you need four to six to get a clean face, but you get results already from the first treatment. After a single day, you will already see improvement. And you say then how long it lasts? Each one? Uh, usually an average of four to six treatments once a week will be able to give you a clean face, chest and body. Each treatment session uh, will last according to how much uh, skin lesions for acne vulgaris you have at this moment. If my whole face and chest and back are covered with condensed skin lesion, active inflammatory lesions, then the treatment might take me around 20 minutes. If you have just pimple here or there, or, or zits, what you call in uh, the slang, then it will take a few minutes. So it's really fast procedure, painless, and you can go uh, to your daily routine. Do you treat differently if somebody have a acne on their face or if they have acne on the back or, or their the chest even? Do you treat it uh, differently with IPL? Okay, for females usually they don't have facial hair, so th that's not a question. I treat the same with their face and in the back or the chest. If there is a male that has a beard, I will explain to him that you can have acne under the uh, hairs. And I recommend to treat it with the stencil, uh, but there might be a loosening of hair follicle because the IPL will also target the hair. But I prefer that there will not be scar underneath the beard than having a skin lesion that is not treated. You must inform the patient and up, uh, the final decision is up to him or her. Why is a, it a problem for a, a man that they have hair on their face uh, with IPL? One of the hormones, uh, again, that, you, that the IPL targets is the melanin in the hair follicle. And uh, if you have acne and hair follicle next to each other, when you shoot the energy, it will go both to the hair and to the hair follicle and for the acne vulgaris skin lesion. So you must inform the patient that he might see uh, hair removal in that area as well. So you use the stencil to minimize the effect for the hair and just target the skin uh, lesion for the acne vulgaris. Do I need to do any preparation before the treatment? Thank you for a great question. Uh, each patient has to sign informed consent. As I said, uh, if they are under 18, the both parents should sign. Uh, then you explain to the patient the procedure. Uh, you schedule for appointments. Uh, you do skin cleaning for uh, black and white comedons and uh, you put gel application uh, Parker gel on the face and then you attach the applicator. Now uh, for the first treatment uh, the patient 
probably didn't experience this phenomena before. So you guide them, you inform them, this is the first pulse I'm going to shoot. How do you feel? And then you can go and cover the rest of the areas. And there is a bond between the patient and the uh, operator doing that treatment. And after that, everything runs smoothly. What about the sun exposure? So every time you are treating with the energy-based device, the recommendation is that the patient will use sun protective clothes and uh, cream because you don't want a double dose of radiation from the sun and Israel is a very sunny uh, temper, uh, temperament and the region so you don't want to have uh, skin burning from double dose from radiation from the sun and the IPL. So the uh, advice is to use sun protection when you are treating with energy-based device. What about uh, sun beds? Uh, according to the Dermatology Association, uh, tanning beds are prohibited from use because it might increase uh, skin cutaneous lesions like melanoma, BCC, SCC uh, during the lifetime. So the advice is to avoid artificial tanning beds just to get uh, more tan uh, skin for, uh, let's say, uh, appearance and not for medical indication. And how soon I will experience a uh, result or see results? Uh, results you, you will experience after the first initial treatment. So, uh, some of the patient uh, reports result immediately after one day. Uh, usually it will uh, subside after one week. And from the, next, from the second meeting, you will already see that the whatever you treated on the first treatment is gone. It's, it's not there. Okay, so this is a fantastic information, Dr. Nanda. I've learned a lot. And do, do you have anything else that you want to, to tell us? Or? So I wanted to inform that uh, treating IPL for acne vulgaris is for all skin types, even the darker ones. Uh, usually we treat for skin type number one till four with 430 applicator and for skin type five with 530 because we'll sacrifice a bit from the energy for higher safety because their skin contains more melanin. But we have great results even in darker skin patients. So they should not avoid uh, having IPL as a choice of treatment. Thank you very much uh, for joining us today, Nadav. Uh, it was a great experience and very educational one. Uh, thank you for uh, being with us and uh, hopefully you will be with us uh, in the next podcast that we will have with Dr. Nadav Tam. Uh, the next uh, podcast that we're going to have is about Titan Bright. Titan Bright, you want to tell us about it? Sometimes? Titan Bright is a new protocol that Formatech developed uh, in addressing uh, prevention and correction, skin wrinkles, pigmentation and vascularity in uh, one single protocol. I will not expose everything, so you will have to come and listen to us again.